This is an overview of how I converted my standard water heaters into Wi-Fi enabled water heaters. This uses common parts that you can get from any home center and a few that you'll have to order online. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so this is the heart of the system. This is a metal enclosure and inside here we've mounted two contactors that's these two items right here and we've wired those up into the circuit for the water heater this is the original circuit that was connected to the water heater and all we're doing is just intercepting it and then following it down to the water heater right here now this system has been running at our house every day for six months now and I just want to show you these contacts here after six months of time these contacts right here right there show nowhere there's no carbon buildup there's no arc flashes Everything on them looks brand new after six months. So these contactors can last for years without having to ever be changed out. Now this part right here makes the brains of the operation. That's a Wi-Fi enabled plug that connects to uh, several different apps and you can control the apps with geofencing so that when you leave the location, the outlet will turn off and that will turn off the power to the water heaters. And when you arrive back home, the outlets will turn on, heating the water back up. You can also set these through the apps. Each app is a little bit different, but you can set these up with a schedule so that even if you are home and you're in bed asleep, you can schedule the outlet to turn off, which will turn off your water heaters overnight so you don't have to heat up water that's not being used. And you can have it scheduled to turn the water heaters back on when you get up in the morning, when you're getting ready to go to work or start your day. And this limits the amount of time your water heater is allowed to operate. Personally, our water heater operates only a maximum of six hours a day and we have never ran out of hot water yet. Now as far as the wiring, it's actually much simpler than it looks. It looks like a little bit of a mess, but that's mostly just because I have two water heaters. Most cases you'll have one water heater, and this will be a little bit cleaner, a little bit simpler in here, but it's actually very simple. So originally, these silver conduit coming in the side over here came down and actually connected to the water heater. All I did was disconnect them and they are connected onto these two screw terminals here. When the contactor is not pulled in, power cannot travel to this side. This side over here is connected to the actual water heater. It runs down these lines, down the conduit, and connects back to the top of the water heater in the original place that the wire's connected to to begin with. That's where the power to the actual heating elements travels through. To wire up the smart side of it, the control power side of it, off of that smart plug, the wires come up through this cord which is nothing more than just a three prong um, 15 amp electrical cord for an appliance comes into these connectors splits off to your typical 120 volt black and white circuit and it comes in and connects one side will connect to one side of the contactor the neutral side will connect to the other side of the contactor the only thing different here is because I have two contactors for two water heaters I just split the black into two lines and went one uh, 120 volts to this side 
and 120 volts to this contactor down here and split my neutral off to go to this side of the contactor and this side of the contactor down here. Everything has been ran with ground wires from the water heaters through to the box, through the electrical cable that goes back to the outlet, which is also grounded. And everything is conveniently packed tightly in this electrical box to keep everything safe. Let's go ahead and trigger the water heater and let's see what it looks like whenever the water heaters actually turn on. So what you saw right there was the electromagnet coils pulling the contactors in and now that completes the circuit so that there's power can travel all the way through the contactor to the other side and actually turn on the water heaters. Whenever the smart outlet is not turned on these wires here that connect to the contactor they do not pull any power they're completely dead well the wires are completely dead the contactors don't pull any power the smart outlet always pulls a little bit because it has to stay connected to the Wi-Fi and wait to receive a signal to turn on and off but the contactors themselves whenever they're not energized they don't pull any power when they are energized for the water heater they only add roughly about four to six watts extra to the water heater barely enough to know about as much as a, a night light running okay this is just a quick look with the covers reinstalled and when we turn on the outlet and we would turn the outlet off this is just another look at the smart outlet that I'm using and the reason I decided to go with a external smart outlet versus one that mounts actually inside of the wall is should there ever be a problem with this outlet if it was to wear out stop working no internet connection no more app support or I just want to switch to a different different uh, smart ecosystem if my wife or daughter are at home alone and the water heaters are not working for whatever reason they can either come out here and press the button on it and that turns it on and then should this outlet actually fail completely and it not work at all they can just unplug it take the cord and plug the cord back in now, at this rate there wouldn't be any smart controls for it but it'll get us by until we can I can troubleshoot it and figure out what the problem might actually be but in this case if anybody ever needs to work on the water heaters in an emergency situation where there's no internet we can actually just quickly with no tools anybody that can unplug a cord and plug it back in can get the water heaters turned back on uh, my wife and daughter are fully aware of this feature, know exactly what to do should the water heaters not turn on as they're told to. Now when you order these contactors, the only thing you'll have to be real careful about is that you order them for 120 volts. That way it can work off of just a standard household outlet. You see right there where it says coil 120 VAC. That means that you can just wire it up with just a neutral and a hot wire and plug it into any outlet. Now I installed this in June and I don't have any hard figures to show you, but we did notice a pretty good drop each month in our power bill, even in July and August in the heat of the, the height of the summer. Our power bill actually went down from the month before. And we've noticed that it has been probably about 20 to $40. It depends on the weather outside with our heat pump running, but about anywhere from 20 to $40 lower than what it had been before I installed this. And all the parts, including the contactors, the Wi-Fi outlet, the wiring, 
everything probably came out to close to a hundred dollars now that's for two contactors which that's only about 10 or 15 dollars anyways so if you only have one water heater to hook up it's probably going to be less than a hundred dollars and i think the whole thing took me maybe an hour and again that was with having a wire in the two extra contactors and having to run the extra wiring down to two different water heaters but it still only took about an hour so to save that much money every month that cheap in about an hour's time it's definitely worth it